You as a human here on Earth use about 1.6 pounds of oxygen per day. And if we were going to send you to Mars, how much oxygen would we have to produce for you? What's the best way of getting that oxygen? And what is NASA working on right now to help pave the way for the future missions? Let's talk about that. Let's begin with a theoretical situation. We're gonna send five people to Mars on a trip to and from the red planet. It's going to take three years, and over that time frame, we will need around 14,600 pounds of oxygen to keep them alive. And if we wanted to just give them pressurized oxygen, that would cost us around $100 million to do so. So sending pressurized oxygen to the red planet doesn't make a lot of sense. And this leaves two options for us creating oxygen on Mars, and recycling the oxygen that we already use. It turns out we've actually discussed creating oxygen on Mars before, but in a different method. In a previous episode, we discussed terraforming the Martian atmosphere, and converting a CO2-rich atmosphere to oxygen. And a main way of doing so is these two methods called electrochemistry and ecopiesis. Electrochemistry uses a process called electrolysis. When carbon dioxide is raised to a very high temperature and pressure, it separates the carbon monoxide and oxygen atoms from the molecule, and therefore we could create oxygen gas from just separating the two. Ecopiesis is a little bit different. This takes a biological route by implementing cyanobacteria and algae to the Martian soil. By doing so, it would convert the carbon dioxide to oxygen in similar ways that it happened here on Earth. In a more recent video, when we talked about creating rocket fuel on Mars, we briefly described how oxygen is created in the Sabatier reaction. And this again uses electrolysis, but instead of taking the carbon dioxide atmosphere, it actually requires the extraction of ice from underneath the surface, and then separates the hydrogen and oxygen atoms from within the water molecules. But there are actually more proposals on how to create oxygen on Mars one of which is introducing Archaeoglobus vulgitis to the Martian regolith that feeds on the perchlorates that are within the soil. Now, what in the world did I just say? First of all, Archaeoglobus vulgitis is an extremophile, which is a type of organism which is roughly the size of a bacteria and are found here on Earth in extreme environments, such as high acidity, high temperatures, or strange chemical compounds in the environment. This organism in particular is capable of taking perchlorate molecules and separating them into smaller chloride molecules and oxygen gas. Now because of this unique trait, scientists believe that it could have evolved before photosynthetic organisms, meaning that this type of organism could have existed for over a billion years. Now why would we want to introduce this organism to Mars? Well, it turns out that NASA believes that about 1% of the Martian regolith or Martian soil is made up of perchlorates. And that might not sound like a lot, but it turns out that perchlorates are actually pretty harmful to us humans. And that is because enough of an exposure to perchlorates can cause our organs to slow down and potentially fail, which we don't want to happen on Mars. So by introducing these organisms, they'll not only be able to create oxygen on the red planet, but also make our soil safer for us and safer for our plants to grow in. Now thank you to Jesse for showing me that this exists, and if you want to learn more about this method, check the description below, there's an article linked there. So now that we've briefly covered the scientific side, let's talk about the engineering side and see what we're actually capable of doing. Now let's start with CO2 electrolysis. NASA has plans to send up the Mars Oxygen in Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE for short, on the 2020 rover. This is important because it's actually going to try and convert the carbon dioxide atmosphere to oxygen at a rate of about 10 grams per hour. Now for water electrolysis, there aren't any missions as of right now that are being sent to Mars. However, it's a fairly straightforward method and is commonly used all around the globe here on Earth. Therefore, it wouldn't be too difficult to create a lightweight method if we found a source of water on Mars. Now for ecopiesis, or the process of creating an ecosystem on Mars, NASA is working with a company called TechShot, and they are developing biodomes that could be drilled into the Martian regolith. This will not only create oxygen using cyanobacteria, but will also try and introduce some nitrogen to the soil, which could be used for fertilizer for future missions and creating plant life. So now that we've discussed some of the technology behind each one of these regions, let's discuss some of the limitations or how much energy you would need to actually create enough to keep a human alive for a day. 
Now let's start with electrolysis. It turns out that the MOXIE experiment would need about 21.6 kilowatts of power per day to keep a human alive. And that's about equivalent to four average households here on Earth. Now water electrolysis is much easier. It takes around three kilowatts of power, which is less than one household here on Earth. Now the difference between these two numbers is because in the MOXIE experiment, it has to take in the carbon dioxide, raise it to a high temperature, a high pressure, and then separate the oxygen atom. Whereas for water electrolysis, you don't have to raise it to nearly as high as a pressure or temperature. Therefore, it's much easier to separate that oxygen atom. So ecopiesis would take a combination of energy and space. It would take about 220 square feet of space in order to keep one astronaut alive. However, the energy cost would also go up, mainly because we would have to pressurize that area as well as keep the temperatures at a range that they could exist. And lastly, when we talk about Archaeoglobus fulgitis, there's a lot more to learn about this organism. It only lives in really high temperatures around 65 to 90 degrees Celsius. And having to keep that type of organism at such a high temperature would also cost a lot of energy. So we're at this weird balance between space consumption and how much energy we actually want to use. Considering all of those setbacks, it looks like water electrolysis is actually one of the best ones to use. And it turns out that's what they use on the International Space Station. They have something called an oxygen generating system that creates anywhere from 5 to 20 pounds of oxygen per day, depending on how much their sensors say they need. And they also have a sensor that determines how much carbon dioxide there is, and they end up venting out what isn't needed. However, on Mars, we can use that carbon dioxide to then create more methane or rocket fuel. So from my perspective, I believe that understanding these biological solutions is very important. Also, getting the data back from the MOXIE experiment once it gets to Mars will show us how much energy it actually takes to create that oxygen. And yes, water electrolysis is more efficient, however, we aren't for sure where the ice is on Mars. Therefore, turning the atmosphere to oxygen is our only real and true way of doing so as of right now. Therefore, we have to figure out how much energy we will need. So what's the best way of getting that energy? Is solar panels enough or will we have to go nuclear? These are some of the questions we're going to answer in the next episode. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.